Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle that you see in my hands and that you saw in the intro. This is the Ruger AR556. So this is the budget rifle offering from Ruger. If you look around on the internet, there's a few AR15s that are pretty much always sub $700 made by sort of big reputable manufacturers and this is one of them. So I got one in, requested it from Primary Arms. They sent it out for a test and evaluation and uh, basically been shooting it now for about three or four months. We have just over 900 rounds through it so far. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is do a bunch of shooting with it, test the accuracy of it, come back in and get into the specs of it. And at the end, we'll let you know what we think of it overall. However, one thing I wanna point out is that I've noticed with the sort of budget gun, budget rifle reviews, we get a lot of new viewers here, viewers that are not subscribers. So if you're not a subscriber and you haven't been watching my series on basically what all the different specs um, I'm about to talk about mean, I highly recommend you go back and do them or, or watch them rather so that way you can understand some of the differentiating factors between the, some of the different rifles out there. So I'm going to go into barrel specifications, the materials, I'm going to go into bolt carrier group specifications, the materials, all that stuff's important and I have videos on each. So I highly recommend you guys check those out. We'll try to put links down below if I remember to do so. If not, just put it up in the search bar, Mr. Guns and Gear, AR-15 Barrel Specs, AR-15 Bolt Carrier Group, and it'll come right up so you guys can see what everything means. Because I really do think specs matter with AR-15s as well as shooting, which we'll get into here in just a second. Particularly when you're trying to decide which rifle is right for you. So that's about it. We're going to let the dogs take a look at it and then step out to the range and test the accuracy. We're gonna see what this little budget rifle can do. We have uh, target down range at 100 yards. We have rest here, this is a CTK precision rest. For those wondering, I think I have a review of it. Uh, on the rifle, we have uh, arrow precision mount and a primary arms, one to eight scope on there with the ACSS reticle. Uh, a few different loads for you. Up first will be Gorilla Ammunition. This is their 55 grain uh, Sierra Blitzkrieg bullet. We got a couple bugs trying to bite me and uh, we'll see if we can push through it. We got about a five to 10 full value wind, uh, crosswind here out on the range. So shouldn't be a big problem here at 100 yards. It might mess up the microphone a little bit though on top of the camera. So I apologize for that if that's happening. That was interesting. So we're gonna load up uh, some 69 grain, all point boat tail ammunition here from Free Ammunition, so a little bit heavier load. I should also point out that this uh, ammo is their new production 223 stuff, so it's been pretty accurate in the past. Um, I there will also be a code down on the bottom of your screen here for 5% off any of the Freedom Munitions ammo over on their website, so we appreciate them doing that for our viewers here. Um, that was an interesting point of impact there. This uh, rifle was zeroed with uh, the Freedom Munitions 223 remanufacturer stuff that I shoot out here all the time. Um, be interested to see how this does in terms of point of impact here. I guess we'll explain. Uh, for the first target we're holding on the top left square, I was holding on the bottom left edge of that. So aim small, miss small kind of thing. And uh, interesting on the shift. We'll see how this load does in terms of that. Still some shit. Odd. Anyway, we have the uh, Fioki. This is their 77 grain Match King hollow point boat tail load. 
223 chambering. And uh, we'll see how it does. This is about as heavy as it gets for commercial ammo anyway. And uh, 553 or 253. 556 or 223. So we'll see how she likes it. One thing I want to comment on, sort of while it's fresh in my mind, is the actual trigger on this gun. Got some traffic going by. Must be uh, church getting out. So the trigger on this gun is mil spec in terms of uh, how it looks and everything like that, and even how it feels, but it's heavy. Uh, I tested it before I came out today. It was breaking between eight and nine pounds. So a lot of mil spec triggers out there will be right around six pounds, five, six pounds, something like that. This one's one of the heavier mil spec ones I've ever tested. So you definitely feel it when you're bearing down on it for groups like this. Again, it was really kind of crazy on that POI shift, but sometimes that stuff just happens. I always laugh when I read the comments out there, particularly in budget rifles like this, we tend to get a lot more uh, uneducated viewers in terms of shooting and stuff like that. And they'll always be like, you can't shoot for crap. You're not even hitting the bullseye. Okay, it just kind of depends on the load. So anyway, up here with the... Uh, Gorilla stuff, that was a good group. In fact, it was an excellent group. We are right at an inch and a quarter on that one, just over, it really could be an inch and a center to center. Then we went down here to the Freedom 69 grain stuff, opened up a little bit. Right at two and a quarter inches there. Came back over here with the Fiocchi 77 grain load. Right at an inch on that one, so can't complain about that for a uh, non-free floated rifle. I'll take it. Starting out on the end, we'll get into the details and work our way back. We have the uh, Ruger proprietary flash hider out there on the end. Uh, it's a Ruger design. It looks a lot like some of the Mini 14s that you've probably seen over the years. It does a good job at hiding flash. It's a little bit shorter than the standard A2. Uh, it doesn't have a flat bottom like an A2 would have, so if you're firing prone in the dirt or dust, you may have some stuff kicking up, but really I don't think that's much of an issue. Uh, it's a good flash hider overall. It is threaded for half by 28th, so if you want to put any aftermarket uh, muzzle device on there you can you can run it suppressed like you guys saw throughout the intro and it runs just fine there so uh, muzzle device I like it I like flash hiders um, it works just fine there's a lot of stuff going on here with the barrel first and foremost it's made of 4140 steel it is cold hammer forged it has a 1 and 8 twist and it has a carbine length gas system so uh, it has no melanite treatment it has no chrome lining and uh, that's something that a lot of people on the internet have discussed ad nauseum uh, you guys saw that it certainly shoots perfectly good groups, uh, better than many out there on the market. Um, profile, they call it a medium profile. I would call it kind of a medium heavy profile. Um, and one thing I should discuss now while we're trying to show you the profile is exactly what I'm doing right there. So instead of your traditional delta ring where you would actually just pull it back and pop your hand guards off, this one here is threaded. Ruger says they have a patent on that. I find that kind of odd. Um, uh, Eugene Stoner made an AR-10, I think for Spain and Portugal, that had almost exactly the same system. So that's been out for 40 years, but I guess Ruger just went back to the well with that. Additionally, while we're on the topic of history, <laughs> uh, the gas block here being pinned to the top of the barrel was also something that Stoner did on a few different AR-10 rifles. So uh, while it's different than what we're used to with the AR-15, it has been done before and seems to work just fine. So we'll remove the hand guards here, just like that. You don't need any tools, so that sort of is the advantage of it, I guess. Uh, the disadvantage would be that, you know, it's not standard. However, if you want to add any different hand guards to it, it is standard. So any of your, like, say, Magpul carbine length hand guards will drop in there just fine. Anyway, what I was taking it off for was to actually show you the the barrel itself. You can see here underneath the hand guards, it is a uh, 0.850 diameter and then out front past the gas block it tapers down to a 0.75. So it's sort of an interesting design and profile that Ruger is doing by themselves. The rifle itself weighs in at 6.53 pounds unloaded on my scale. So not too heavy, but it's heavier than some and again most of that is going to be due to the profile that we see here on the barrel.
The rifle has a combination front sight block as well as gas block. And out there on the internet, I've seen a lot of things about it. A lot of it I don't think is true personally. So we'll try to kind of get into that here. So first and foremost, it is not F marked, but it does have a F marked height to it. So basically uh, your front sight, when you zero it and co-witness with any sort of optics will work just like a F marked front sight base. If you guys are familiar with that, I have a full, full video on the topic for those that aren't I'll link down below or here in the video for you guys. But we have some serrations there on the uh, front to supposedly cut down on glare. I've never seen glare on an AR-15 front sight post, but I suppose it's better than nothing. And the material, I read a lot online that this is made out of aluminum. Just kind of feeling it. it doesn't feel like aluminum to me. So I took a magnet here that we have, standard magnet, stuck it on there and it sticks to it. So I'm, I'm kind of inclined to think that it is steel. It doesn't say over on Ruger's website when you look and see what it is. So well, I guess we'll leave it at that. The rear portion, or the bottom portion rather, has a bayonet lug, and I have two bayonets. I have an M7 and an M9. The M7 will not fit on there at all. It is a mil-spec surplus bayonet, and the uh, M9, I really have to jam it on there to get it to fit, so sort of fits, sort of not. On the bottom there, we do have a quick detach slot, so if you want to mount a quick detach sling on there, you can do so. However, um, I mean, that's kind of a not the best place to mount it, but it gives you an option if you don't have anything in your hand guards that you can use. So I suppose that certainly is a good thing. I'm sure a few of the eagle-eyed viewers out there picked up on this, but the hand guards themselves do not have any heat shields in there. Um, so if you are dumping a ton of rounds through it, they may get hot, may eventually melt. However, I fired a few uh, Magpul D60 mags through it, uh, straight through, and had no issues with it in terms of melting or anything like that. It definitely got hot, but any hand guard's going to get hot. Um, but so no issues there, but just pointing that out, that's something that Ruger skipped on for the price point. Um, and again, to put them back on, it's relatively simple, particularly compared to some other stuff out there on the market. I just drop them in. And if I can actually do it here on camera. And then of course, just tighten it down to secure them in place. I do like the fact that they're very narrow. So those of you that are familiar with the old Colt M4 hand guards, very, very narrow. They feel good in your hand. They're not big and fat and chunky like some of the ones out there, like the one that Colt are using now, actually. Um, I do like the narrow grip on them. Very ergonomic. Both the upper and lower receiver are made of four seventy seventy five T6 aluminum. So that is the mill spec material. It has a uh, hard coat anodized coating on there. We do have our dust cover and we do have our forward assist. So compared to some of the other like real budget ARs out there, that is something that differentiates it. It also comes with this rear sight here. The rear sight, in my opinion, is very good. It's similar in looks anyway to a Magpul M-Bus, but uh, it functions a little bit different. It deploys a little bit differently, but it is... Uh, windage adjustable, and when you combine it with the front sight, of course, to adjust your elevation, you can definitely dial it in. You can get hits with irons, no problem here. Uh, the aperture on there is relatively narrow, but it's the only one you got, so if you're doing a lot of low light shooting, you may want to look at an optic, but for most folks, I would say it's not really going to be a problem at all, and it does not have any T markings on there. For those of you guys that are used to that, you're missing it there. We do have M4 feed ramps if you look in there, so we have that on the barrel and the barrel extension. Getting into the innards, if you will, the charging handle is a Forge 7075 T6 uh, affair, so nothing too fancy there, mil spec, and like everything else in this rifle, if you guys haven't noticed it yet, it has that Ruger logo on there. They're sort of dropping it everywhere they can. So, uh, bolt carrier group. If you look online, it says this is phosphate finished, to my eye. Um, it looks melanite finished, and the finish is held up very well, much better than most uh, black oxide or phosphate, phosphate type finishes, but the carrier itself is made of 8620 steel. You can see we have those cuts in there, and for those that don't know, those cuts, as opposed to a traditional round bolt carrier group, are designed, in theory anyway, to allow more grit and grime to be in your uh, upper receiver, and the carriers to still be able to go back and forth without resistance. So that's what those are for. I have no problem with that at all. One thing that is odd is that we have this little cutout here on the back side. Really not sure why Ruger did that. Um, they still had the full auto profile here on the back so to me that doesn't make any sense but hey if that's what they wanted to do that's what they wanted to do the carrier itself is chrome line there as you can see as is the gas key and then the staking here on the gas key is uh, very strange so typically you're going to see traditional type staking where it's hit with a staking device these ones here appear to be hydraulically pressed in um at this point, that is a method that is not proven, 
Um, it may work just fine and you can see metal is contacting metal which ultimately is kind of what you want um, but it's a it's a different technique if these start to come loose over time I suppose we'd see the reports on that out there on the internet I haven't heard of any I just wanted to point that out because it's definitely different uh, and not mill spec in that regard. The bolt itself is made of uh, 9310 steel and the bolt as well as the barrel are high pressure tested together. So Ruger actually won't sell replacement bolt carrier groups because of that fact. For those of you guys looking for one, you can't find it. Now I can't find on their website or anywhere else if it's actually magnetic particle inspected, but I would, I'd have to imagine it is. I don't know why else you would do a high pressure test without doing a magnetic particle test. It, that wouldn't make any sense to me, but uh, again, I can't find the literature out there. I emailed them and they did not get back to me. So take that for what it's worth. Our extractor here does have the uh, black O-ring on there for positive extraction. We had no issues with extraction uh, at all throughout the use of this rifle. So there's your bolt carrier group. Again, the little receiver is 7075T6, appears mil spec in most ways. You can see here on the magwell, it does not have an enhanced magwell or flared magwell. Something I would like to see if they ever make a Gen 2, if you're if you're actually uh, doing the lowers in-house like Ruger says they are. Uh, there's no reason really not to, in my opinion. We do have a polymer enlarged trigger guard on there though, which I do like. It just makes it a little bit bigger than a standard mil spec one. So if you're shooting with gloves, or even if not, your bottom of your uh, finger isn't going to drag on the trigger guard like it does in the mil spec ones. So nice touch there. The grip itself is very ergonomic. It feels, if you guys are used to the Magpul MOE, it feels exactly like that. So it's a similar design as you guys can see. It has different texturing on there though for sure. And of course it has the uh, Ruger markings on there like everything else in this rifle. So the trigger again appears to be mil spec but when you pull it it's pretty heavy like we talked about earlier. But nothing too fancy in there at all. Everything appears Good to go on the lower. Uh, our extension here is a six position lower, as you guys can see, our six position extension rather. And it is mil spec in dimension. I could not find the material specs online, so I'm not sure if it's 6061 or if it's 7075. Again, they don't say on their website, so I uh, wish they would. We do have a carbine buffer in there with a standard mil spec spring. Nothing fancy at all. And uh, the uh, castle nut there is not staked for those looking. So uh, some people will think that's good because it makes it easier to take it off. Some people will think it's bad because it could come off easier, right? <laughs> so the stock itself is a standard M4 style stock with the Ruger logo on there. If you actually look at this compared to the Smith & Wesson M&P Sport, it's exactly the same. So whoever is making the stocks is basically selling them to both companies because it has the same amount of lines, the same thickness, all that stuff, which is a little bit different than like a Colt if you look at them uh, for those of you guys that care about that kind of stuff. But again, we have our Ruger logo. Uh, it's a decent stock. It works fine. The M4 stocks work and it's a good stock for, you know, a budget rifle. Earlier in the video, I touched on the price point and checked today over at Primary Arms website. This thing is going for $599. If you watch the sale, sometimes you can see it for even less. So that is a lot of rifle for the money, for sure. You guys saw the accuracy was very good. Let's talk about reliability now while I'm thinking about it. So like I said, we have uh, just under 1,000 rounds, somewhere between 900 and 1,000 rounds through this rifle. So far, we've had two malfunctions. Um, one, both of them, rather, were failures to fire. So one was with Freedom Munitions 55 grain reman, and the other one was with 62 grain Wolf steel cased ammo. So I rarely have failures to fire. That's not a common thing with any of the ammo I used, and it was kind of unique to this rifle. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm not sure what's going on. If the firing pin maybe is just a hair shorter than some others, not sure. But I wanted to throw that out there just so you guys have the data point. Um, in terms of reliability. Other than that, if the round fired, it cycled. So we had no issues there on that front. So basically what I think are the rifle overall. Well, I think a lot of people who are looking at this rifle want a rifle that's factory built from a reputable manufacturer. Ruger certainly is that. And uh, nowadays, speaking of Ruger, they've gone away from their sort of not putting evil military features on rifles for civilians and doing it. So that's a good thing. Uh, Bill Ruger has passed and the rifle, really, and the company rather, has changed in that regard. So we do have a bayonet lug. We do have a flash hider. All those things that Ruger used to not include back in the day. So those are good changes for Ruger, but it is a reputable company with a good reputation for customer service should you ever have a problem. So I think it's a contender if you're on a budget and you want your first AR-15 or maybe another AR-15. Um, people out there in the comments section, I can already hear you, and many of you have probably already typed it out before I've said this uh, during the video, is that you could build, build a rifle for less. That's true, you absolutely could. Uh, you get no argument here. But a lot of people just want a complete rifle, and most people are not going to build rifles. So that's sort of the reality of it. I think it's a good rifle. 
um, but it has strong competition. The M&P Sport 2 is an excellent rifle as well. The Aero Precision AC-15 is an excellent rifle as well. Um, again, I kind of think people have to go through the specs, see what they want, see what they like. Um, for instance, the M&P Sport is heavier than this rifle. If you don't want a heavy rifle, then this would kind of get some points. The Aero is even lighter than this rifle. So you can kind of go through and compare and contrast across the board. The one thing I wish this had was uh, a different barrel material. So 4140 is fine. I don't really have a problem with that. 4150 theoretically is better, but I mean, World War II was fought with 4140 steel barreled Garands, so it worked for them. 4140 is fine. I do wish they melanated it though. You know, I talked to a lot of barrel manufacturers doing this and basically melaniting, uh, depending on scale, is gonna cost anywhere from five to $10 per barrel. And uh, Ruger has pretty big scale. I would imagine they could do it for around $5. And I think it would be uh, added improvement to the rifle in terms of just making people feel better about it. And also it gives better corrosion resistance, which is nice as well. If you're gonna have this as sort of like a farm or a truck gun, uh, just riding around in a tractor or something like that, um, that would be definitely better than having just the uh, finish it has on there now. So that's pretty much it. I would say it's a good rifle. It seems to generally work. Two malfunctions is not great, but not super terrible either. Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the rifle, anything else, you can always post down below in the comments section. You can also post those questions over at my Facebook page, which is generally the best place to get in touch with me because I don't always see the comments here on YouTube. I see most of them over there on Facebook. So if you have a question you need answered, that's the place to get me. But thanks for watching. If you guys are new to the channel here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you guys are already subscribed, thank you very much. Go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.